now we're gonna move on to the second one. The the we're gonna discuss sensitivity plots in RFA, and of course introduce um, correlation um, coefficients that are in there. All right. We examined several of the built-in ways to investigate RFA simulation results. In the previous one, we talked about uh, frequency curve plots, tabular results, simulated input plots. And so in this lecture, we're discussing how to use RFA sensitivity plots to further investigate our simulation results. So simulated input plots displayed display the actual sampled values for each of the input parameters for every single realization whether you're running the single or the, the full uncertainty. All right, sensitivity plots can be found for each simulation in the sensitivity plot tab shown um, here. There are four sensitivity plots. There's info volume versus peak stage, starting stage versus peak stage, flood seasonality versus peak stage, and info hydrograph versus peak stage. So you can view the sensitivity plots for each of the realizations like we said, talked about. So the, the main thing to notice, um, if you probably noticed, it's four different variables compared to the peak stage. As that's what we're interested in, we wanna know how these input variables are impacting our stage frequency. All right, so RFA reports two types of uh, Co uh, uh, correlation, correlation, like I say, correlation coefficients um, for the sensitivity plots. There's the the Carolyn Pearson correlation is a measure of the linear correlation between two sets of data. That's just the Pearson, not that Carolyn. The, sig the sign signifies if there is a positive or negative correlation between the two variables. So values can range from negative one to one with the values closer to negative one and one being more correlation, so negative correlated or positively correlated. So values close to zero, of course, would mean then no correlation. So this, the Spearman correlation is a non-parametric measure of ranked correlation, which is the statistical dependence between the rankings of two variables. It, is, it, it, it um, it looks at how well the relationship between two variables can be described in a monotonic function. You can kind of see the dots and how they shape there. So both correlation coefficients can be used to evaluate relationships between the variables and the R R and an RFA simulation. So first, the sensitivity plot available in the drop-down menu shows the correlation between inflow volume and peak stage. So the plot on the left is an example for a dam with relatively high correlation, which suggests that the inflow volume is a primary driver for the peak stage. So a lot of times we wanna report what the primary drivers are, right? Or report that something's not a driver. That helps inform us maybe what else you need to study. So the Spearman correlation here is 0.997 and the Pearson correlation is 0.849. So you can just see it how, as uh, the different volumes are sampled, the big range in um, elevation there. So in the plot on the right, the results for the different, for different dam are shown where the correlation is relatively low, which suggests that the inflow volume is not a primary driver for the peak stage. So here we got the Spearman correlation of 0.354 and the Pearson of 0.461. So in other words, large inflow volumes don't, don't necessarily produce higher peak stages. So that's what, when it's not correlated, that's kind of what it's saying. So the second sensitivity plot is the, the starting stage versus peak stage. So, and again, an example to the left here, the correlation is relatively high, which means that the starting stage does influence the peak stage. So again, we got an 865 for Spearman and 0.78 for the, the Pearson. So you can notice that the higher starting stages generally result um, in higher peak stages. So that's important. So if it's affected by antecedent conditions, you might need to investigate that more, right? So the plot next to it, um, you can for a different dam, you can tell that the correlation is really low with a 0 0.022 Spearman, a 0.017 uh, correlation for the Pearson. So it doesn't really matter what the starting stage is. It doesn't affect the peak. So. Yeah, 
So these types of correlation plots can provide valuable insight on the impact of uh, the different variables have on the, the resulting stage frequency curve. All right, the third sensitivity plot type shows the effects of the flood seasonality by showing the variation in peak stage for each month in a format of the box and whisker plots. So the box and whisker plots provide seven number summaries. All right, so there's two points that represent the max and min values. There's their are whiskers that represent the fifth and 95th percentiles. The, the box represents the 25th and 75th percentile. And then you have the dashed line that represents the median. So these can be used to evaluate the months that produce the largest and smallest variations in your peak stages. So for example, in December and May, you might notice that the largest max peak stages occurred. And then on the opposite side of that, January, February, December resulted in the minimum peak stages. And we can see that like right there in the middle, May and June has the highest median peak stages. So that kind of tells you like which, which seasons are affecting your stages. All right, final one shows the effects of the hydrograph shapes um, by showing the variation in the peak stages for each hydrograph shape, again, with the box and whisker plot. So you've got the seven number uh, summary variation. So you, you can, this plot, you know, you can be used to evaluate the sensitivity again of the peak stages to the different hydrograph shapes. And for this example, each of the four hydrograph shapes were basically equally weighted. And for this realization, all seven of them are basically the same. So it really didn't matter. They, they, they all had kind of equal impact or it really wasn't, it didn't make much difference. There wasn't one impacting it more than the other. So here is an example of a set of sensitivity plots for Blakely Mountain. The first plot at the top left, we see that the sampled inflow volume is positively correlated with the peak stage. So the spearmint correlation is a 0.954. And the Pearson is 0.958. This tells us that the sampled inflow volume is driving the peak stage, uh, which this is, uh, you're gonna see this as a common thing. Like a lot of these are volume driven projects that we have on the core, or at least the bigger projects are. So next we see that the correlation plot for the starting stage at the top right, where we can see that the, the peak stage is not strongly correlated with the starting stage. So the Spearman is way down at 0.2247 and the Pearson is at 0.279. So again, if you notice, you could take these kind of plots and put this in the report and you can, it's an easy way to report what these things are sensitive to. So the next, we see the Boston Whisker plot on the bottom left uh, for flood seasonality. For this dam, floods in May generally had higher peak stages, uh, which was expected because starting stages tended to be higher during this month. And then we also see that uh, there's a wide range of peak stages observed during each of these months. And again, this is a located in kind of Arkansas area where you get the spring floods. So you expect it to happen kind of there. So the final plot at the, at the bottom right shows the inflow hydrograph shapes about the, you know, with the blocks and whiskers. And it's a similar result. A lot of times you don't, you might not see a big difference between um, the impact of the different hydrograph shapes, but we are at least representing different hydrograph shapes.